My marks in RC are consistent, but in VA they are fluctuating a lot. Should I rely on VA or go with RC? So brilliant. Of the two, RC is the heavy part, and you're able to be consistent with that. Brilliant. Focus more on RC. That's nice. For VA, the three main categories are sentence rearrangement, which is para jumble, sentence elimination, and para summary. There's every chance that of these three, you have a decent strength in one. It could be elimination. It could be rearrangement. It could be summary. Either way, one of the three. And so find that one and chase that. So of the eight remaining questions, if two or three are in your territory and you're rather happy with them, brilliant. And of the remaining, whatever is theta, take a punt. If it's not, if not, it doesn't fall in place. Especially because they are theta questions, they're slightly trickier. When you have to write down an answer, there's no negative. So you can punt with those. So ha take those chances because there's no negative marking there. But if you're anchoring around RC, that's brilliant. You don't have to worry. Of the three in VA, if you can find out which one of those three is more up your alley, that'll be great. Try to do that. How many questions we need to plan to attempt in CAT? Please specify section wise to get a higher percentage. It's a good snapshot. Have a look at this. I'm not going to go over this completely. This has no bearing with this year's CAT. This has nothing to do with, uh, with CAT 2022. There's a broad benchmark based on what you have seen last year and the year before. Something to guide you. And so it's like saying, look, we often hear cricketers and at the toss, uh, the captain will say, this looks like a good batting track. In a 20 over match, I think 180 is a good thing. And then they'll play in the first three overs, the ball will be flying around. Then they'll realize that 140 is a brilliant target. So you need to make that adjustment or the other way around. So you need to make the adjustment after you start the paper. But if you want something to just start with, to, to go with and have a look at it. My rule of thumb, generally do not chase attempts, do not chase a score. And so it's, it's a, your decision making on how much to attempt, how easy this paper is, should be dynamic. Should be based on how that paper is going. It cannot be based on a preconceived notion. Sometimes the preconceived notion warps your mind. You start chasing or become too conservative. Go with the flow of the paper and then see how much you can attempt. Change based on what that paper is telling you. But don't target a bunch of attempts too aggressively, too fixed a notion beforehand. What should be your key takeaways from an official mock release by the IEMs? How does the technology look? Uh, How is the UI? Is it clean? Where does this number? Uh, it looks like this section will come first, this section will come second, this section will come third. They're crystal clear, generally, in that they're very consistent with that. And then say, oh, nice, that's it. Will the pattern of questions be same? Will the level of difficulty be same? Will uh, similar questions appear? None of that. It's just a tech, comfort, UI, interchange thing, UI verification thing than any form of model paper. So don't overanalyze that even a little bit.